mathematical relationships that allow us to predict a liquid's vapor pressure at a specific temperature are hugely useful in engineering machinery and devices that either involve the separation of liquids into gas phase components, like fractionation towers in petroleum or natural gas refining, distillation apparatus, like you would see in a whiskey distillery, or even in the operation of an internal combustion engine. And the most valuable mathematical relationship that links the vapor pressure of any liquid to the temperature that you're interested in is this rather unwieldy equation below, which we call the clausius clapeyron equation, which is hard to say. So if you don't want to bother for a minute, think of it as the CC equation, which is how I'll often abbreviate it when I'm solving problems. The clausius clapeyron equation is a log-based equation that relates the vapor pressure of a compound at two different temperatures through their enthalpy of vaporization, delta H fat. And the reason the equation is relatively complicated looking is that if you were to look at any liquid, water, ethanol, methanol, octane, and take a look at how the vapor pressure increased with temperature, you would not see a linear relationship. So if I was to plot in an experiment the vapor pressure of water at a variety of temperatures, whether in Celsius or Kelvin, I wouldn't see a straight line relationship between the vapor pressure of the liquid and in the gas phase and the temperature in Kelvin or the temperature in Celsius. Instead, I'd see a curving trace that is relatively flat in some regions, but then begins to get steeper and become a little bit exponential. And so one common mathematical approach to dealing with data like this that allows us to find a linear relationship between two variables is to make log plots or plot the reciprocal of a variable, one over the variable, instead of the variable itself. And if we do that same plotting technique with the, water, with the vapor pressure of water at different temperatures, but instead of the vapor pressure itself, we plot the natural log ln of water's vapor pressure at one over the temperature in Kelvin, we actually do see a straight line relationship where the slope of the line is essentially the enthalpy of vaporization divided by the gas constant R. And so this is where the clausius clapeyron equation comes from. It turns out that all liquids have that same straight line relationship, not between vapor pressure and temperature, but between the natural log of the vapor pressure and the reciprocal of the temperature. You can actually find the vapor pressure of a liquid at any given temperature without using a graph like what I just showed by using the equation form of the clausius clapeyron equation, which says that the natural log of the vapor pressure of the liquid at a specific temperature, P2, is equal to the natural log of the vapor pressure of the liquid at a lower temperature, which we're gonna call P1, plus the enthalpy of vaporization, delta H naught VAP, divided by the gas constant, times one over the lower temperature, minus one over the higher temperature, where T1 is the lower temperature and T2 is the higher temperature. So the subscript labels on the vapor pressure and the temperature go together. Two generally indicates the higher temperature and the higher vapor pressure. Subscript one indicates the lower temperature and the lower vapor pressure. So what this equation is really saying is that I can calculate the vapor pressure of a liquid at a higher temperature as long as I know three things. The vapor pressure of the liquid at some lower temperature, what that temperature is, and the enthalpy of vaporization. Then the only other value I need to plug in is the temperature, T2, at which I'd like to know the vapor pressure of the liquid. When using this equation, though, you have to watch out for a couple things. First, it's algebraically a little complex in terms of its order of operations, so you have to be careful how you rearrange this equation to use it. You also have to be careful when looking it up outside your textbook because there are properties of logs that allow this equation to be manipulated in different ways, and you have to make sure that you're using a valid form of the equation. So you'll see the equation written this way. You'll see it written as the natural log of P2 over P1 is equal to this whole thing. There are many forms of this equation. 
So if you have a good algebra background and you're good at thinking through logs, it's probably fine for you to pick any form of this equation that you can find in our textbook or find on Sapling's website or find with a quick Google search to solve problems because you can see how you can manipulate it in terms of the natural logs to adapt it to the style of problem you're going to solve. In general, for our class purposes, I've picked out this form of the Clausius-Clapeyron equation because I find it's the most applicable to the types of problems that we do in this class. Just be careful about pulling the Clausius-Clapeyron equation from other sources because this same equation may be framed or stated a little differently because, there, because of the way that logs worth ma work mathematically, there are a number of different ways you can make this equation appear and it's still fundamentally the same equation. So you have to be a little bit careful about what form of the equation you choose and how you use it. In terms of using the equation, you need to know the enthalpy of vaporization and you have to have the enthalpy of vaporization in joules per mole. The gas constant now changes. So remember when I said in the gas chapter, we would use for the ideal gas law, the gas constant as 0.0821 liter atmospheres per Kelvin mole. Well, liter atmospheres is an energy unit that can be related to joules. If we're using the gas constant in an equation where we have something like enthalpy of vaporization measured in joules, we don't use the ideal gas value of the gas constant anymore. Instead, we use that other value I showed you back in chapter eight. R is equal to 8.3145 joules per Kelvin mole. So you got to choose the right value of R to use with this equation. Last but not least, when using the Clausius-Clapeyron equation, you have to choose temperatures in Kelvin. You can't use temperatures in Celsius because, again, your temperature units have to match the units in your gas constant. So when using the Clausius-Clapeyron equation, your temperatures have to be in Kelvin. What we do with the Clausius-Clapeyron equation is generally, quite simply, we either find the vapor pressure of a liquid at a specific temperature, so we solve the equation for P2, or we want to use vapor pressure and temperature data in an experiment to determine the enthalpy of vaporization for a liquid. So we are going to do one example where we work the Clausius-Clapeyron equation each way. In the first example, we will take pressure and temperature data and use it to solve for the enthalpy of vaporization delta H VAP. And in the second example, we will use pressure and temperature data at one set of conditions along with the enthalpy of vaporization to predict the vapor pressure of a liquid at a higher temperature. So we're going to solve this equation for P2. So I'll meet you over there to take a look at those examples in a second.